All right, in this video, what we want to do is we want to look at the idea of assessing normality, and we're going to look at it for both of these ways, but this time, instead of doing, um, uh, doing things by hand, what we want to do is we want to look at how we can use the TI Inspire to help us do that. So we will first look at how to graphically, using histograms and stem, stem plots, look at how that can, can kind of help us with the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And then we'll also look at constructing a normal probability plot and show you how we can easily do that on the TI Inspire. So I'd like to take a look at doing this with uh, the set of data that I have below in regards to uh, 60 randomly chosen fifth grade students. What we want to do with this is eventually we want to be able to make a probability plot of these 60 fifth graders. Um, before we do that though, I want to kind of um, first look at the idea of histograms and how we can use this data and, and kind of determine whether it meets the rule of 68, 95, and 99.7. So we'll do that aspect first. So the first thing I'd like you to do is take out your TI Inspire and I'd like you to enter this data into your TI Inspire. All right, when you enter your data, make sure that you're in a list and spreadsheets. Make sure that you label the top of the column that you're working on with IQ, with IQ, excuse me, or some other variable name. It really doesn't matter. And then enter your list of data in, the, in, in a column. So when you do that, you should end up with something that looks like this right here. And then what, what we want to do with that list is we want to take that information and the first thing I'd like to do with it is I want to sort it. So it, make sure that your, your cursor is up in this top cell where A is. And then what you want to do is go to Actions and go down to Sort. And it will ask you what do you want to sort. Well, I want to sort column A and I want to sort it in ascending order, so just hit OK for that. And you'll notice that my data now is sorted from smallest all the way down to the largest value. So that's the first thing that we're going to do with that data. All right, the next piece of information that I would like to get is I'd like to get my one variable statistics. So all you need to do is, is like we've done many times in class, is go to statistics, go to statistics calculations, and one variable stats. Okay, and we want one list, that's good. We want them to be over the IQ scores, and or IQ, excuse me, and we'll have that start in column C is fine, it doesn't really matter, okay? So there's our one variable stats, and you can see kind of where we have a mean of 114.983, and we have a standard deviation S of X of 14.8009. So we've done our one variable stats. We also have our five number summary. So at this time, in your notes, if you could fill that in as to the five number summary and get that all down before we move on. All right, once you have your five number summary down, here are our answers. If you need to pause it, go ahead and do that. But what I'd like to do now is I'd like to create a histogram. So let's go and do that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go and we're gonna add a data and statistics. So you can go to home and add data and statistics. Okay, get all the bouncing balls. And what I wanna do now is down here, I'm gonna put IQ scores and it will make a dot plot out of that, okay but I don't want a dot plot, I really want a histogram. So I'm gonna click on histogram there by going to plot type histogram, plot type histogram, you can see that's where I'm at right now. And once I have my histogram in there, um, I wanna mess with the properties of my histogram a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to bin settings of histograms, and I'm gonna set my width at 10 and my alignment at 75, okay? Hit OK to that. Now, now it's not fitting very well on the screen, so I'm just going to go to Window, and I'm going to go to um, Zoom Data, and that way it will fit to that actual data there. So we have nice equal bin, bin widths of 10, and it fits nicely on our screen at this time. All right, next what I want to do is I want to go to my data again. So I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet. And what I want to do is I want to create 
the Z scores for each one of my IQ values. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna create a new column here, and I'm gonna call it IQ Z scores. And IQ Z scores, and I'm gonna enter an equation here. So I'm gonna put equals. And then I'm going to, I'm, what I, to get my Z score, I'm going to take each individual result. So I'm going to put IQ, which is the values, all of these values in this column, minus the mean. And the mean is found in, if you look at it, it's found in cell D2. So I'm going to put minus D2. And then I'm going to put in parentheses. And then I need to divide that by the standard deviation. And the standard deviation of the sample is Sx, which would be in cell D5. So I'm going to put D5 here. And then if I hit enter to that, it will fill in those values. So now in column B, all of the values that I have here are the Z scores for each one of the IQ scores. So the reason for doing this now is to figure out, well, how many, how many of the IQ scores are within one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations of the mean? So what we can do is we can come over and we can look at our values here and count them up. So it, within um, three standard deviations, you know, you can just count them all up. So anything that any value between negative three and three would be within three th standard deviations. Well, if since I want you to fill in this chart, you're going to want to count the ones between negative three and negative two, between negative two and negative one, etc. So see if you can fill this in for the values by counting them up based on these z scores that I have in the table here. So if you counted up those values correctly, this is the values that you should have come up with. Now, that, that tells me that there are two values that are between negative 2 and negative 3, etc. So what I want to do now is I want to answer these questions below. And in terms of how many, so I'm going to try and keep that on the screen there, how many of what percent of observations fall within one standard deviation of the mean? Well, if I counted all of those up, 23 and 18, Okay, that's one standard deviation on the low end and one on the high end. That gives me a total of 41, which is exactly 68%. There are 57 of them that are within two. So that would be six and 10, and then also the, the 41 that we already had, which is exactly 95%. And then we see that 60 of them are within 100%, or, um, uh, excuse me, 60 of them, or 100% of them, are within three standard deviations. So as you think about it, it really fits pretty well with our rule of 68, 95, and 99.7. What that's telling us is that the, the distribution that we have is looking like it's pretty normal. All right, so the last thing that I want to do is I want to show you how to actually create a normal probability plot on your uh, Inspire calculator. And to do that, it's actually super simple. I know I have a long way on, on your notes. We're going to skip the long way. I'm not all that concerned about that approach. I'm more interested in can you, can you actually do the probability plot. So what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, with that same set of IQ scores. And we, we actually can leave exactly the way we were before. So we have, we have our IQ scores. We don't have to worry about this IQ Z score. We're just going to work with, with this one right here. And what I want to do is I want to go back to my graph here. Okay? And on my graph, for plot type, we're going to click on normal probability plot. So once I have that, notice what happens. When I'm doing my normal probability plot, what it does is it on, on the y-axis here, it gives us the expected z value. Okay? On the x-axis, it gives us our IQ value. Okay? So each one of these points, so for instance, this point 81 has an IQ value of about negative 2.394. You'll notice that all of my points 
are very close to a line. We have you know a couple that are a little bit further out, but generally speaking, they're very close to that line. What that tells us is that this set of data is very normal or is operating very in a very normal way. So it would be considered a normal distribution.